be good though. Hey everybody, I'm Josh and with me is Jeff in Control Robinson from Evil Geniuses. How are you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing good. And we're at MLG Providence. This is the national championship event, the last of the year for MLG. And how does uh, how does Jeff in Control Robinson feel coming in to the event today? <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's, an old, it's an ongoing process trying to work on my, on my head. Obviously, um, you want to stay positive, so today I'm, I'm feeling good, I feel happy, I'm trying to be calm. I've narrowed myself down to like two builds. I think one of my big problems in the past MLGs has been, I go in like, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to read my opponent and do all this different shit. And then I, I do some dumb build that's just not, it doesn't belong where it is. So this time around, I'm, I'm saying I've got two that I've worked on the whole time for each matchup. And I'm going to get my best shot. Nice. Alright, and uh, since this is the last MLG event of the year, do you want to reminisce a little bit about earlier events? What, maybe what's, what are some of your prouder moments or uh, fondest memories of MLG 2011? 2011, um, hope Hopefully, for me, will be a year I look back on and say that's where I, I, I earned my stripes. I, I that's where I put in the work that I'm then reaping later because I got my ass handed to me through most of these tournaments. Like um, a lot of people are quick to say, "Oh, you played terrible. You're a bad player." I, I'm not a bad player. I didn't play that terrible. I had my bad games for sure. I mean, everybody can say that. But um, facing Holt, Puma, everybody, you know, uh, Chef, Kiwi Kak on a regular basis, is terrible groups of death. I sat down with the best and I. I looked at them and I knew that if I make a different decision, so I'm playing a little bit better, I could beat them. And that's that's a humbling, nice moment for me. But the other nice thing about it too is I didn't beat them. You know, I, I had in a lot of cases got my ass handed to me. So um, 2011 is gonna be the year I look back on and say that was where I learned to handle the mental aspect of this game. And that's what I want to say. I mean, I'm still I still haven't done it yet. So this is a little bit of a wish list that you're hearing from me right, right. now. But the, the highs and lows, though, obviously, I've just been seeing the audience grow. Uh, MLG has really Really brought something special to North America. I, I, I'm talking. A guy flew in from Australia for fuck's sakes. The guy flew yeah. in from Australia. Like, and I said, are you playing? He goes, no, I'm just here to watch. <laughs> Holy shit. So I'm really excited to see how far this, this event's taking people. Um, the lows I got done talking about, you know, getting my ass hand to me, it obviously sucks ass, but MLG 2011 will be a special year for me, uh, hopefully in a long career. Mm -hmm. Well, the interesting thing, I mean, you say you get your ass handed to you, but the interesting thing about these MLGs is everyone does except yeah. for one person. Like, at the end of the day, one person's thrilled and everyone else is, you know, pretty bummed or, you know, proud of their second, third, fourth, whatever it happens to be. But honestly, there can only be one winner at each of these events. There's only six MLGs. There's other events strewn throughout the year, and that kind of is a segue into NASL. 2011 was NASL's debut, obviously, and you were a major part of that. Um, yeah. NASL 2 Grand Finals are coming up. Uh, how do you think NASL's been doing uh, throughout the year and kind of without without your presence now? Um, NASL, I, I think just because of the way we brought it into the scene, at least for now, will always be considered kind of like the underdog grassroots movement, and Russ, the owner of it, I think he's he's owning that. He's, he's pretty happy with that. Like, he doesn't want to be the corporate ma major, you know, big dog. He wants to be the tournament that people are pulling for. Mm -hmm. They've had their lumps. You know, the Koreans pulling out. They've, uh, people still talk about the commentating issues, because they're not, they don't have taste toast. They don't have day nine, um, throughout the regular season. And it's hard to get the message out to people. Like, you're not going to have taste toast, because they can't sit there and commentate right. uh, Every nine in to the world. five outside yeah. of Korea. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, what I was going to say, too, about MLG, it's the same here. We have a tough community. We have a, a community that demands excellence, and when they don't get it, they complain about it. But you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, it's, it's easy for us as pro gamers to sit back and be like, wow, you guys put a shit ton of pressure on us. This really sucks sometimes. But then, it's easy for us to also get the outside perspective where it's like, you know what? If they didn't have those high expectations, who knows how far StarCraft would or would not have gone. So we need it. So um, NESL is, is the underdog, but I think they're happy with where they're at. And their big thing is always been their offline event, right? The first one had its problems the first day, but then ended with a bang. Yeah. I think they're hoping to skip the problem and just yeah. go straight to the bang this time, so hopefully that happens. That'd be great. Are you going to attend the event? I can't, not this time. Yeah. That's, uh, December's all mapped out, and if I'm not playing in it because, you know, I yeah. didn't qualify, then, then I'm not going to be there. But we got a lot of guys there, so hopefully it works out good. All right. Um, moving on, so we kind of recap this year a little bit. Next year is going to have its own just insane things happening. First of all, going to be part of the swarm release um, what are your just general impressions you don't have to go into like unit specifics right. or anything but what what are your impressions of heart of the swarm Patching and Heart of the Swarm indicates that Blizzard and the people designing the game are aware that Protoss needs a little bit of help. Um, 
know, people are tired of hearing about the QQ, so I won't go too far into it, but uh, I think what most people can agree is that Protoss did need a little bit of aid. So the upgrade in the patch with the, the nerf to EMP, but also the upgrades being more affordable, yeah. really nice, really subtle, but really nice. Um, and then in Heart of the Swarm, the units add some really good dynamic to Protoss, but I really think they're going to change them up, but the, the gist of it is Protoss is going to get a harassed unit like the Oracle, if not the Oracle itself, and some financial harass against those mule dropping or injecting Zergs, yeah. and Terrans respectively, obviously, are going to be really nice. Um, but then also they're, they're addressing that our anti-air woes are kind of existing there. The capital ship is a little bit silly. Nobody goes care because they're garbage. Um, and then the Replicator. Replicator is a, a weird one. Yeah, um, I agree. <laughs> we'll see. And then as far as, I mean, you said not to go into detail. Here I go. No, it's, it's fine, it out, it's fine. But I think the bottom line is we're going to get some more diverse play in Heart of the Swarm, and I'm really excited about it. Okay. And the next question after that is, do you think Heart of the Swarm could be or should be the competitive standard? Um, Blizzard obviously wants the game to sell, so I'm, I'm curious if they're going to even allow licenses for non-Heart uh, of the Swarm tournaments. Like, if someone wants to do a Wing of, Wings of Liberty tournament, are they even going to be able to do it? Because obviously yeah. Blizzard needs to sell the game. So what do you think about Heart of the Swarm as a, being the new competitive standard? You know, I didn't think about the fact that Blizzard could control that situation with the licensing of uh, Wings of Liberty. Um, that's a really good point. I did not think of that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the second Heart of the Swarm comes out, even if it's in beta, and a lot of people don't agree with me on this, I think that instantly becomes the standard for what tournaments are. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know if a lot of people have bad memory or they just don't remember it, but we did that in the beta for Wings of Liberty. When that came out, we weren't playing Brood War tournaments because right. that was not the future. We were playing uh, Wings of Liberty. And I really think, to a lesser extent, but to the same um, result, when Heart of the Swarm is in beta and everyone's playing it, right? Like, it'll be one of those things where you can go to GameStop and reserve it and you get a free pass. Yeah, yeah. Blizzard's sending them out in waves. Like, everyone had it. Um, I can't think of pro players that were, like, exempt from tournaments <laughs> in, in the beta of, of the first StarCraft II when that was going on. So, I, I, I think that that'll be the, the same way. Like, it'll be weird. It'll be weird as shit because... Hopefully Blizzard then works with the major tournaments. Like if we're having an MLG and they're like, well, we're updating the patch now. Yeah, I don't think they'll do that. Scary. I think they won't. So I think when it comes out, it'll be the standard. Okay. And so, I mean, I've just been thinking about this stuff a lot and I'm asking pretty much everybody. Uh, the Korean players, the Brood War players, it's been, you know, it's leaked or whatever, rumored. All these guys are playing StarCraft 2 now uh, in their pro houses. Do you think maybe with Heart of the Swarm coming out and all the new Koreans coming, that'll sort of coincide? and um, they will, they'll be able to come in on a more even ground with all these new units and stuff like that? I think so. I, I think where StarCraft II gives everyone more of a chance that Brood War didn't is that it's still less of a mechanical game. Like, if you would have done this same interview a year ago with me, I would have been like, oh, Brood War players are infinitely more mechanically adept, and StarCraft II is so much easier than Brood War. But what we're finding out is that over time, there's more ways, there's more actions to be done. Mm -hmm. um, the mechanically stronger players are winning a much higher percentage of their games. It's still not like it was in Brood War. Like, if you set Misu down and he played a hundred I-Cup games, he's yeah. going to lose two of them or something yeah. like that. And that's because mechanically he's just that invincible. You do the same thing with StarCraft 2, he'll lose 15 of those games. We're just talking about mechanics. Hi, Cats. I agree. Cats <laughs> uh, so I, don't, I think it won't be as, as alienated a factor, but it's still going to be there. Okay. And um, so we talked about part of the swarm, talked about MLG wrap-up. Um, what's the next event for you after MLG Providence? You know, I'm actually really excited to say, and hopefully my management doesn't kill me, I'm going to be going to the Home Story Cup. Nice. Uh, which is a dream come true for me. Um, I, I've, I haven't been putting out the results, so what I've been doing is I've been working as hard as I can to get those results. They haven't clicked in yet, but my team has enough faith in me that they, they're going to send me to a tournament in Europe, and the hope is that I'm going to pay them back by doing really, really well. So I'm I'm really excited at the opportunity, because when a guy's in a slump, the worst thing you can do is shelf them and say, right. just go practice, and we'll figure out when you're going to be better. The, the best thing you can do is put them in every tournament they possibly can, and eventually they'll crack that, get their confidence going, and start winning again. So that's what I'm hoping to do, and uh, take those guys. They do an amazing yeah. job over there. It's Germany. I've already got people reaching out to me saying we're like they're really excited to see me, and I'm excited to go. So I can't wait. That's excellent. All right. So is there anyone you'd like to thank? Fans, students, sponsors, stuff like that. Go ahead. Just everybody. You yeah. know, like MLG is amazing. Complexity. You guys are doing an awesome job. Like. Um, the, the community is like really growing and I'm so proud of it like uh, 
it's hard for me to put into words. Quantic Gaming, a, a, a group of people I've never heard of in my life. <laughs> they're having fan meets. They're bringing on major players. They're traveling guys. Like StarCraft's here. I'm really happy. So the fans, my students, GhostCoaching.com. Obviously my team, Evil Geniuses. But uh, really, I mean, if you're ever in, around MLG, go out and play and, and have fun. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Always a pleasure. And good luck at MLG Providence. Thank you.